in this lecture we will discuss about vector integration but before that we will start with some definitions first what is an open line this is suppose point A and this is suppose point B and this is what we mean by an open line. Now what are the characteristics of this open line? The first characteristic is that it has endpoints. And the endpoints in this case are A and B. The second and the most important characteristic is that an open line cannot enclose an area. Being open, area is not enclosed. So this is how we can identify an open line. Next, what is the definition of closed line? So this is a closed line. This is a closed line and the definition is therefore that a closed line encloses an area. So closed line encloses an area. In case of a circle, the area is pi a square. If a is the radius and in this case if a is one arm of the square, a square is the area and here also we can measure area with the help of planimeter. We next describe what we mean by open surface. This sheet of paper is an open surface or if we draw an ellipse then this is an open surface. Let us draw the picture of a cap which we wear on our head. So this is an open surface. Now what is the definition of open surface? The definition is that it cannot enclose A volume and secondly it has a boundary or what we call a contour or the edge so this is the contour this is the boundary in the case of an ellipse this is the boundary this is the contour we are now in a position to define what we mean by a closed surface. Clearly, a closed surface encloses a volume. For instance, we can think of a cube of side A and the volume is a cubed, a sphere of radius r will have a volume 4 by 3 pi r cubed. This is a sphere, but a circle is not a closed surface, but an open surface which has an area pi r square, but it cannot enclose any volume. We next define what we mean by a simple closed curve. The definition of simple closed curve is that it represents a curve that does not intersect itself, that does not go through itself.
so it is not self intersecting for instance this type of curve does not intersect itself let us draw a curve as follows so this is a curve we are drawing and it does not intersect and here it goes on top of the underneath curve and going on the top is indicated by this loop so as we move along this curve it comes here and then it does not go through this curve but it goes on top of it another simple closed curve let us try to draw so again it does not go through it but it goes above it which we show by this loop sign and then it completes itself so these are simple closed curve which does not intersect itself another type of curve is multiply connected curve now such curves intersect itself they are self intersecting for instance so here is the point of intersection it intersects at this point and there is one intersection both looks like the numeric 8 but here there is an intersection and therefore it is multiply connected it has two loops being connected here but in this case there is no such connections it is a single curve so it is simple closed curve it is a never ending curve but here there is an end at the point of intersection and we can draw more such loops or add more such loops so there are so many intersections and this is a multiply connected curve there are several intersections several loops connected and therefore it is called multiply connected let us now discuss vector integration We will first discuss what we mean by line integral and there are so many names given to it. It is also called tangential line integral. It is also called contour integral. Another name given to it is path integral. Which was the topic of discussion in a video on mechanics. Another name which is the most popular one and used in physics is circulation. Let us define what we mean by these terms. Consider a vector field. And we discussed what we mean by vector field in one of the videos on mathematical physics. So this is a region say where a vector f is defined at each and every point so it is an F field and let us consider say an open line and these are the end points let us call it A let us call it B and let us denote this curve by C so we have considered a vector field 
where we consider a contour or line C or curve C. Here we have taken it to be an open line. We can also take it to be a closed line. So let us show it here. Not necessarily a circle. So this is also C say. So C is either an open line or a closed line in the F field. Let us now divide C into n small elements or segments. So let us chop it. Let us divide it into small portions. And there are 1, 2, 3 n segments. Here too. Let us chop the curve. Let us divide the curve into small portions or elements. And suppose this is a typical portion. And here to say this is a typical portion. Let us call this typical portion vector delta Ri. Which is delta Ri which is the length and the direction will be along the tangent where i is equal to 1, 2, 3 up to the last segment being the nth one. So this is vector delta ri and this is the unit vector tau cap i. Here too we can draw in a similar way this is delta ri so tau i cap is the unit vector at the location of the ith segment and secondly it is taken in the sense of traverse in this case Taking tau i in this way means we are moving from A to B. So this is our sense of traverse. Similarly, this circle can be traced in the anticlockwise or in the clockwise sense. But let us prefer to trace it in the anticlockwise sense. And therefore, we have taken the tangent along this direction. The region under consideration is a vector field. And therefore, this vector f has definite values at each and every point. And hence, vector f will have a value at the location of the ith segment. And let that value be vector f i. So this is value of vector field at delta ri that is at the location of delta ri and let us show it in the diagram. Suppose vector fi at this point is this one and at this point say it is along this direction. We will now consider the dot product between vector fi and delta ri where i runs from 1 to n. So let us construct scalar products or dot products. For the first segment say this one or say this one For the second one, let us consider f2 vector dot delta r2 vector and so on. And the last one for the nth segment it is. And let us add all these dot products. 
the ith one is and we have to sum over i from 1 to n. So this is the sum that we have got. Next step is we have to take limit n tending to infinity. In other words number of segments is infinity and this means automatically the length of the segments or the size of the small elements will no longer be finite but will be infinitesimally small. So delta ri tends to 0. Let us write it with these limits. And this is what we get by definition in this case over the curve C that is over the open contour it is F dot dr. Because delta ri with this limit is no longer finite but infinitesimally small. And with this limit we can no longer count them as i equal to 1, 2, 3 etc. And therefore summation is replaced by integration. And with respect to this case or figure where we have a closed line we will write it in this way by putting a loop sign indicating that we are integrating over a closed line. We can also write it in this way and here too because vector dr is tau cap dr. This is called open line integral of vector f over c and this is called closed line integral of vector f over the closed curve c and these are called circulation. So let us write it afresh. So circulation of vector f along curve c is given by this is called open line integral where C is an open line or well, this is called closed line integral also. And in this case, C is obviously a closed line. Let us now study some application of line integral. Consider a force field. F is force, say. And in this force field, consider a particle 
to be taken from point A to a point B by this force, say along this curve, and an elemental portion of which is vector dr. So the work done upon the particle to take it over this vector dr path length will be and to take it from A to B the total work done will be integration from A to B and let us consider a closed path and call it C and let us trace it in the anti-clockwise sense this is vector dr a small portion of it then the work done to take a particle over the entire curve that is to circulate the particle over the entire curve by this force vector f will be the loop sign indicates that the path is closed and we can note that if vector f the force field is conservative then the circulation does not depend upon the path specific path which is followed it will be same if we move from a to b through a different path say along this path or along any other path so this is path independent does not depend which path is followed the endpoints however are fixed and the closed line integral or the circulation over the closed path is zero if f is conservative second application let us consider an electric circuit This is resistance and the EMF over these two points is say E. Now the definition of this electromotive force is where C is this electrical circuit. Vector E is the electric field at say vector dr which is an elemental portion of this electrical circuit. So EMF is therefore the circulation of vector E the electric field along the circuit. So this is the definition of electromotive force and using Coulomb's law where Q is a charge on which electrostatic force vector f acts due to the electric field vector e so and q is a constant so it goes outside and what we have here is work so emf is therefore the work done
to circulate unit charge along electrical circuit. Here this can be written as W if Q is 1. Hence the definition. It follows therefore that the circulation of electric field over a closed circuit gives EMF. What does the circulation of magnetic induction over a closed path give? Let us address that now. Let us come to the third application. Let us consider the circulation over a closed path C of the magnetic induction vector where C is say a circle for simplicity we take it to be a circle this is the center and at each and every point in this region and hence at each and every point over C there is a magnetic induction B which is say created by a current flowing along this wire and the current is I flowing in this direction and we trace it in the anticlockwise sense so that the sense of tracing the path and the direction of current flow bear a right hand screw relation. In other words if we trace the circle in this sense that is along the curled fingers then the thumb would indicate the direction of current flow. So dr vector is along the curled fingers and i should be the thumb direction. Mind it C does not carry any current. Current is flowing along this wire which creates magnetic induction at each and every point on C. Now this is the famous Ampere circuital law. So the right hand side is well known and it is mu zero into I enclosed by C and this C encloses current I and therefore this turns out to be mu zero into I. This is the famous Ampere circuital law. Here mu zero is permeability of free space of value Henry's per meter here I enclosed is current enclosed by C in a nutshell the application of line integral has been shown for three cases. The circulation of force is work done, the circulation of electric field is the EMF and the circulation of the magnetic induction is mu zero times the current.